You wrote of the players who took a knee during the national anthem in this last football season. They were mindlessly loyal to a black identity that had run its course. Wow, that's quite a claim. Go ahead and just, yeah. just explain what you, what you mean by that. There is, uh, um, blacks obviously have undergone in the course of America, the three, four hundred years that America's been around, um, and, and victimized blacks and, and slavery and segregation and all those things we, we're all very much aware of. Um, my point is that out of that came an identity, a group identity, that has been, f for better and worse, focused, grounded in the idea of blacks as victims. And black victimization has become the sort of centerpiece of that identity. And that identity, I think, in the case of the NFL protesters, is sort of dislodged from reality and functions pr just pretty much on its own. So once, once uh, they felt called upon to make some symbolic protest against American racism, uh, they, they sort of mindlessly went along with that without ever stopping to investigate whether there really was uh, oppression, to what degree of uh, of, of oppression is involved in, in, in American life today for, for blacks. My argument is that not very much. Mm. Uh, and yet the, the incongruence of not refusing to kneel for the national anthem when this country, despite its sins, also was a country that for the last 60 years has truly transformed itself morally. Um, and and America to, Americans today are a different people in regard to to all these issues, and um, I thought the protest was was a, was an, a, a, um, an obsolescent gesture that uh, uh, made that, that no one found much meaning in. You said in a recent interview on a <clears throat> Ricochet podcast, mm -hmm. "quote This is not segregated America." I grew up in segregated America, so I know the difference. Close yes. quote. Let's talk a little bit about Shelby Steele as a young man. Mm -hmm. um, you, I have a few experiences here that you've written about, notably in Shame, your last book, and that I've heard you talk about because we've been friends for years. Your elementary school in a Chicago suburb. Mm -hmm. Your parents joined other parents in suing to change that. What was that school like? Uh, that school was an elementary school uh, in a school district where there were only two schools. One was all white and one was all black. And um, we would see the white kids drive to school in the school bus in the wintertime. And we were, well, we sort of... <laughs> you had to walk to school? We had to walk. Uh, we got their textbooks when, when they were worn out. Uh, so we got their teachers when the teachers began to have, have problems, a nervous breakdown or something. They'd be transferred <laughs> to our school, so you experienced it, was, it. Yes, it was abusive. It was. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It was uh, a, a horror, uh, and even among um, segregated schools, this one was particularly bad. My parents did. They actually led the protest. My mother and father organized the parents and boycotted that that school, and uh, so there were no students going to it. And eventually they prevailed, the teachers were, were fired, the principal was fired, uh, and a new school was, was, uh, was started up. So, beginning when you were a little boy, you saw real segregation yes. and real abuse. Everywhere. And protest when there was something to protest. Well, the, the, that's the point, I think. In the 60s, when you, we think about the protest that sort of began, became really severe in the, in the 50s and, and mounted all the way to the 60s, and I think of 1964 and the Civil Rights Bill as the point at which America capitulated and apologized. We were wrong. Here's a huge piece of legislation affirming our, our commitment to not do this anymore. 
Oh, now that bill has a lot of problems that <laughs> have subsequently come to, to, to hurt us. But as a, as a historical gesture, um, it was, it was a, 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 one of the great moral acknowledgments of any society in ever. Uh, it was a really remarkable event. And blacks, in, in a sense, deserve an enormous amount of credit for protesting in that era because there was every, anybody, there was no debate in America about whether or not there was racial discrimination. Everybody knew there was. Uh, the question was what we were going to do about it. And blacks protest pushed that, uh, I think, all the way to the point where America finally did capitulate. Rosa Parks was genuinely a great figure. She was genuinely Martin a Luther great King figure. Jr. is genuinely, genuinely a historic figure. These people sacrificed enormously. They took every kind of risk imaginable. They achieved truly great, something truly great. Uh, it was a moment when black America, as I say uh, in the article, touched greatness. Uh, we extended the m democracy past the barrier of race. Um, so historically, that was, that was, in a sense, our gift to America. 